Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Cliff. And in this video, we'll be looking at the case statement. So far, our programs have been able to execute a sequence of instructions. And if we wanted to make a decision, we could use an if statement to choose between two paths based on a condition. Well, that's good, but I've got a menu in my current program uh, that matches a user's option to many paths. Is there a better way than using many ifs? Well, this is an example where we can use the case statement. And the case statement is, is like the if statement, but it lets us match uh, one value to many paths. So we take the value and pick a matching path. I think that will work for your menu program. So here we have my, uh, my little soundboard program with my if statements. So as you can see, um, it gets quite complicated and this is only four options currently. Okay, so this is where we can use our, our case statement. So notice that each of the if statements is comparing the same value or the same variable, the option variable, with different values. With the case statement, we can write it like this and you'll see straight away it's like much shorter. And the case says, based on the value of this variable, uh, search for the matching branch. So if option is one, then we play the guitar. If option is two, we play the piano, etc. Okay, that's great. And I think that would make it really easy if I wanted to add in more instruments as well, instead of having those big else blocks. Yes. But yeah. With this, with this example, what happens when somebody, say, enters uh, five as the option? Well, at the moment, it won't do anything. So the option, because there is no matching branch, when the option is five, it would just jump straight to the end. Oh, okay. So it just wouldn't do anything. Yes. Or okay. it would. It would look and see that there's nothing to do. Okay. It would then do nothing. Okay. Well, I think we should probably have something there that catches the user options if it's not uh, in, the, in the case. Okay. So you want to do something if it's not... In this case, one, two, three, or four. If there's anything else like yeah. 27 or minus 156. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So in that case, what you can do uh, is include a, an additional branch inside the case statement that catches all of the other options. So if it's not one, two, three, or four, then it does this other branch. Okay. That, I think that's great. Excellent. Cliff, do you want to explain quickly how that works? Yeah, sure, Andrew. So here's the code that we've got here. It, uh, it enters at the main procedure. And the first thing that we do is we, we allocate space for the option variable. Yep, and that's going to store an integer. That's right, cool. that's right. So the, the program begins, and I print out a menu for the user to read that explains what the program does. Yep. Then what we do is we use the read integer function to assign a value to that option variable. Yeah, so this read integer function will display the prompt to the user and validate what they entered is actually a number. So it's going to return us back a number. What number do we want the user to, to use this time? Uh, in this case, let's go with three. Three, cool. So three is then stored into the option variable. That's right. So then we get to the case statement, and what it does is it reads the value of option. Yep, and then, so it's going to get three. That's right, yeah, so yeah. it's actually using the number three here. That's right, yeah, cool. yeah. well, it's, yeah. it's not a case of beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's a case of option. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's bad, Cliff. <laughs> anyway, all right, so... Case option, option is actually just for the value three. So That's right. case three. So it's gonna match that to, to the number three, which in this case will play the sound effect bass. Then it's gonna it's gonna skip over the rest and get to well, I've added this little line at the end just to output to show when the program's finished. Yeah, so we can then press enter to, to continue. Cool. Yeah, that's right. All right, so that one would have played the bass sound effect because the user had entered the value three. So let's, let's try it again. Uh, if we run it again, we'll choose a different option this time. Yeah, so once again, it starts at yep. main. We, we create the, uh, the space for option. Yep. Prints out the, the soundboard menu here, but the user this time is going to enter like one, two, three. Yeah, so yeah. the number 123. Yeah. And 123 will be stored in option. Yep, that's right. And then once again, the, the, the case statement will, will read that value, one, two, three. Yep. And so it gets that from the option variable. Yep. It's not, it's not one of the predefined well, It's parts. not one, two, three, or four. Or no. four. So it'll write out the, you have not made a valid selection, and then yep. the program's going to end once again with the sound is finished. Yeah, press the key. That's press okay. Enter. Cool. All right. Okay, so here are some additional examples. 
This first one is similar to our other program. It's printing out a menu, and we're using uh, the case statement in this in this instance uh, to print out or to execute multiple lines in each case. So that is possible as well. It doesn't have to be just one line of code. You can have multiple lines in each branch. It's pretty cool. And here we've got a, a function that's a, a rainbow color picker, and um, what that does is it uh, uses the random function to create a, a number that will be the choice for the, for the case. Yeah. So this is demonstrating that you, you don't have to just use a variable for the, for the case statement. You can calculate that value in any way. So here we're calling a function, and the result of that function determines the value that we're looking up in the case statement. And so, and so you could have long, complicated expressions there if you wanted to. And so that will uh, return the, the color as well. Oh, yeah. So in this case, the actual function itself returns the color that we picked based on the value from that random number function. Cool. Uh, and our last example here is uh, one that draws different shapes based upon uh, the option that the user has selected. So uh, we're able to use the case statement to say, in the case where we're wanting to draw, you know, if this shape is a, a triangle, for example, then we draw this option. If it's a rectangle, we draw this option. Yeah, I, I use something similar to that in um, some of the games that I've made, actually, to, to draw different uh, enemies and things like that. Yeah, so you could use the case in this way uh, for a number of different programs like that. Okay, that's the end for case statements. Case statements are very similar to if statements. They allow us to branch in our code. In this instance, the case statement works by evaluating an expression, so it gets a value and matches that value to one of a number of different paths, and it then executes that path. Uh, it is a bit more limited, but it can be very useful uh, for certain situations. So what's up next? All right, so some other videos. If you haven't already seen our if video, that's probably a good one to look at. Otherwise, um, you should probably check out the, the looping videos as well. Yep, that'd um, be useful. Yeah, I reckon that be, would have been great with my soundboard, actually, because then we could play more than one sound. Yeah, that'd be excellent. All right, thank you very much, and hope to see you again next time. This has been a Spindle introduction.